Hi, I'm Ibn Fantasi. So today we're going to talk about a karate term and what it means in Kyusho or what it could mean for a person studying karate and studying the art of Kyusho at the same time. The term is called hikite, which means withdrawing hand. It's the hand that pulls back as the other punch comes forward. Now, that withdrawing hand, uh, a lot of people think uh, in the karate world that it's developing power, and it does. I mean, if you throw this back as you're turning your body and twisting your whole body into it as that hand pulls back, then you're going to have definitely a lot more power. But it's a lot more than that, okay? And it's not just for um, twisting the hips. This could be an assault on someone it, with a withdrawing type of a backfisting action. Say I've grabbed onto someone by the shoulders and I pulled this back so the knuckle's hitting behind the ear at that facial, facial nerve as this one's pulling back. So you've got a striking action as you've got a pushing action to offset the person's balance. Okay? What if I'm grabbing the person and pulling so they come extended down here and the punch now goes right into the carotid sinus right on that side of the neck? Okay, what happens if I've grabbed onto the throat and I've pulled it and as I'm pulling, I'm compressing and twisting so I've got into the carotid sinus with my thumb. I'm going to grab, I'm going to squeeze, I'm going to twist to tear the uh, blood vessels or uh, try to damage the nerves that are in there. At the same time, I'm pushing the shoulder back. So I'm getting a two-way action on that. How about the elbow coming back? We've all thought about that, uh, just an elbow into the gut. All right, uh, so there's so many things that that hickey take can, can do. It's not just a, um, a pulling action to develop the, uh, the forward momentum for, for that punch or the other uh, opposite punch coming forward, okay? It's to strike, it's to grab. It's too off balance even, okay? And you could even think of it, instead of just hitting with these type of the hands, it could be a, knuckle, a knuckling action with that small knuckle coming down. As example, as you're pushing and pulling into the person, you could strike and then push, okay? So you're striking down into the, the uh, nerves of the upper chest and through here, okay? And damaging that as well as you're uh, pushing forward on the shoulder. Another idea that you could have off that is if you've got someone and you're just about to do an arm bar, okay? Instead of just pushing on that arm bar, where a lot of people, you see a lot of beginners when they're trying to work um, the tendon in the back here to get that reflexive action, what they'll do is they'll push that arm down, but they leave this hand um, forward. And what that does is it gives that, that arm some play and that body some play. But if you pull the back, you've got a leveraging action, much like a seesaw. You're going to pull and you're going to push at the same time. So as you're pushing and pulling, you're going to be, have a, a greater potential to damage that elbow. And it would be a dislocation at that point. It wouldn't be a, um, a break because you don't break elbows generally. You uh, dislocate the joint. So um, there's a couple different answers for you for just that hickey tay movement, striking behind the jaw, grasping onto the, um, the throat. Okay, you could have done it from behind where you've grabbed into the person's uh, carotid sinus again, or maybe even their windpipe if you don't know the carotid sinus and the vascular tissue and the underlying nerves. And you could pull that as you're, you're pushing the other side, or you could be pushing across on the head, grabbing and pushing with that fisted action. So many things, as long as you have targets in your head, you're going to see a lot more opportunity with that hickey tape. Okay, so uh, when you're doing that, just the push and the pull along with the waist transition will give you greater power. Now, a lot of people ask me why my fist is always canted at a 45 degree angle. All right, and that's because that's the natural alignment of the bones. Okay, but more importantly, that's the way the fist was supposed to be. Okay, it's using that transfer of energy. And if you're doing the same thing with like the blood pool hand, like you've seen in many different uh, videos that I've done here, okay, you're going to see that same exact angle. 
because the nerves are in between the structures of the body and to get to them properly you need the, an angle at, uh, instead of just the perpendicular because the perpendiculars say they're on the ribs and you're hitting into the ribs you've got all these ribs that you have to deal with with a perpendicular strike with an angled strike you'll see that it mimics the um, interior or the space between the ribs okay in many different angles to come up underneath with so you're separating and uh, hitting a weaker structure not just by hitting all the structures that together form a stronger bond but by hitting one individual rib one individual nerve okay and, and that's on either angle and into the head same same idea so when you're doing these um, pulling and pushing uh, actions from your karate Okay, think of also doing some tearing, some hitting on the back pull. Think of um, all these different options that I've given you today. And it'll give you greater depth in your uh, karate and especially in your hikite. Thanks for watching.